so great to see you all. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have as much of a presentation planned because this trip was kind of last minute, but I'll kind of talk through how Truebit works. I think a bunch of you already know about Truebit and we've collaborated in different ways, so um, but let's get into it. Uh, so Truebit is a protocol for, uh, for scaling Ethereum and other blockchains. And first, to kind of frame, frame the world we live in, right now, um, when, you, uh, when you compile a piece of Solidity code to bytecode and then push it to the chain, from then on, when you send a transaction to that particular address and trigger that piece of code to run, um, in some sense, all of the miners on the network need to execute this code and come to agreement on what the result was. And this process involves a lot of uh, redundancy. And running, ex running code on the Ethereum network is expensive. Um, every instruction that, that, um, you know, uh, that you're using costs an amount of gas. And there's this uh, upper bound called the Ethereum gas limit that's enforced uh, per block. And um, this ties into the verifier's dilemma where you know, miners who are verifying a block that was, that was created by, by the first miner don't actually receive any of these fees. So they're kind of doing this work um, without any expectation of reward. But basically what this, uh, what this results in is that running computation on Ethereum is expensive and there's an upper bound to what you can fit within a block. And um, you know, we're thinking about all these different uh, cool applications that we could build. Like we have Eric from LifePeer here where they're building a decentralized video streaming platform. Um, there's Aragon where you could, you know, uh, have a very interesting voting mechanisms where people participate, but you need to tally up those votes on chain. Um, there's prediction markets where you need to, you know, um, calculate uh, prices at which uh, the orders kind of settle. And all of these things involve heavy computations on chain that are not possible in today's world. So this is the, tr this is the problem that Truebit is going after. It's kind of um, different than some of the other scaling solutions here, which are, um, which are which are trying to um, scale throughput. Um, Truebit is trying to scale actual computation. So the way it works is Truebit is basically a uh, hybrid on-chain, off-chain protocol uh, for verifiable computation. So instead of running the computation on the Ethereum network, you pass it on to this protocol that uh, where a handful of people basically execute it off-chain and get the results back to you in a way that you can trust. And now we'll kind of talk through how this works. So hybrid on-chain, off-chain protocol. The on-chain piece is basically a smart contract. It'll be an address on Ethereum. And the API that a decentralized application or, or that the developer will like, really interface with is really simple. It'll be one function. Um, let's call it create task or something like that. And so your application will call this function. And the very first um, argument that you pass in is your program that you want to run. So um, this program will be some WebAssembly bytecode. So Truebit works on, on the web, using the WebAssembly VM. And um, you can either pass in the bytecode directly if it's a small program, or more likely this will be the IPFS hash or the content address location of where someone would be able to find this program. The second argument that you pass into this function is the inputs that you want to be run through this program. So um, um, let's say, you know, in the case of you want to tally up uh, an array of votes and calculate the results, the program itself could be some function that iterates through them and comes up with a sum or like some sort of a key value total. Um, and the, the inputs could be an array of votes. And the third argument that you pass into this function is a reward. So an amount of ETH that um, whoever runs this computation will receive. So you call this function and now this task gets created on the Truebit contract. Now at this point, there's a network of Truebit miners um, who are basically you know, individual computers, anyone, free entry system, anyone can join this network. And their clients are configured to listen for events on this contract. And as soon as they see a new task get created, any one of them is welcome to go run that task. So they go download the IPFS code, um, boot up their, their WASM VM, run the task beginning to end, get a solution, and submit that solution to the smart contract along with a deposit of their own money. Now, anyone else who saw this solution come in can basically say, can basically disagree with it and submit a challenge. 
saying that I also ran this program and I got a different answer. So they submit a challenge along with their own deposit. Um, actually, so before we get into the case of a challenge, let's imagine the case where this person, the solver, ran the program, submitted a solution with their deposit, and no challenges come in. So basically, the solution came in and kind of a timer starts ticking down, which is the, the challenge timeout. So if the solution kind of remains there for, say, you know, 100 blocks or some configurable amount of time, um, without a challenge coming back in, it's deemed correct. And then this smart contract basically makes a call back to your decentralized, to your DAP, saying, you know, this is the solution that you cared about. Um, so that's kind of the expected case. In the case that there is a challenge, someone also ran the program and submits a challenge to this contract. So they're like, I disagree, here's uh, my deposit. And this is the part where the protocol gets really interesting. So the solver and the challenger start playing a verification game, which is kind of an interactive back and forth. And the insight there is that both the solver and the challenger, at time zero, when they started running this program, they must have both agreed on everything because they downloaded the same code from IPFS, they had the same exact inputs, and they had the same um, empty you know, WASM VM. And then when they ran through the entire, the entire program, let's say it's at, it had 100 instructions in it, um, at time 100, they actually disagreed, right? Because they got different solutions. So the challenger using this information basically triggers the first part of this game, which is it asks the contract, it sends a query call saying I query for um, what the solver's state was at the halfway mark of the execution. So at step 50 out of this 100 step program, what was, what was their state of their VM? And the solver now basically, since they're running this TrueBit uh, WebAssembly VM, um, goes up to, state to step 50 and um, creates a Merkle tree. So the client has an ability to create a Merkle tree of their WASM state, which is basically the entire linear memory, the stack, what everything's value, what all the values are gets a single Merkle root and submits it to the contract. So it's like respond step, step 50 with this root. Now the challenger again um, computes their own Merkle root at step 50 and compares it with this value. If, both, if they agree with the value that the solver set, they query for the midpoint of that. And you kind of extrapolate this game as it moves forward and it resolves to the point where the challenger basically forces the solver to a point where um, they've submitted one state and the challenger has narrowed it down to the point where they disagree with the next state. So both of them agree on one state, they ran one instruction, and then they disagreed on the state after. At this point, the program basically has been narrowed down to a point where the on-chain contract can actually execute that single instruction on-chain so you initialize the, the VM on chain. So we have a WASM um, interpreter written in Solidity where it basically initializes it safe to this state beforehand, runs that one instruction, calculates the roots after, and compares it with what the solver said. Now if the solver had said something different, they were basically lying and they get slashed. Um, so in this way, basically we narrow down the scope and like you can, um, by just executing one step in the case of dispute, um, you, um, you keep the solver honest. And so this protocol allows you to run any piece of code, you know, anything C, C++, Rust that you can compile to WASM on chain outside of the limitations of the, of the gas limit. And um, so I can kind of talk through some of the more interesting dynamics of the protocol as well, just to kind of give you guys a bit, bit more of a flavor. So we're, um, obviously it's kind of an ambitious project and we're, we're thinking of our roadmap in terms of three modular layers that we'll build. So the, the first layer is kind of what we call the computation layer, which is basically a WebAssembly VM that can you know, run instructions, it's deterministic, it has metering built in, and um, and it can calculate these Merkle roots. That's one thing that will need to exist regardless. And we need that both in the off-chain world and, and on-chain. Then the next step is the, the verification game, which is this back and forth query response between these two people as, as coordinated by the smart contracts and you know clients that can play that game. 
And again, this can exist regardless of both the layer below and above it. And the final layer is the incentive layer. So it's how the reward comes in, how the solver and the challenger submit deposits, how the solver and challenger are actually selected, how that selection happens. And generally, like the economics of how this economy of like people with excess computational power is drawn in and made to act honestly. So that's how we're thinking about it. And the first two layers, the computation layer and the dispute resolution layer, are more at the engineering stage right now. So we're actually um, you know, looking more deeply into parity WASM and eWASM about potentially collaborating with them on the WASM stuff. Um, and um, the incentive layer is an area of research um, where we have multiple different things that we're considering. So kind of, I'll, I'll give you a taste of it. So um, in the white paper, um, a version of Trubit is described that we're not like referring to as Trubit Classic sometimes, because there's a Trubit Beta as well. Uh, so Trubit Classic, um, what you realize is that, okay, this solver submitted a deposit and um, anyone can challenge them if they said something wrong. So if, and, and if someone challenges them, basically they'll be proven wrong. So this, this scheme has like, um, your security assumption is that you need one honest verifier. It's sometimes we call it unanimous consensus. So it's, it's um, very easy to achieve the security. But when you think about it, if the solver knows that all it takes is one person to check their work to, for them to be proven wrong, basically solvers will never lie, right? And if solvers never lie, then verifiers will stop checking their work because they never stand to win any money. And then when the verifiers stop checking the work, then the solvers can lie. And then, so then, then the verifiers stop, start checking again. So this system doesn't have a stable equilibrium. So to solve that, um, the way it's described in a white paper, basically, is this clever mechanism around a forced error, which is the protocol itself probabilistically, like say one out of every thousand tasks, it will actually enforce the solver to submit the wrong answer. And then in that case, whatever, whichever verifiers challenge that solution gets a large jackpot payout. So they get a payout that's a thousand times larger than they would normally. And that kind of um, you know, amortized over all these times that they tried without success actually gives them a positive, positive expected return. So that's kind of one potential incentive scheme for how Truebit could work. Another one, just to kind of like 30 seconds, is the Trubit beta that we're considering is basically, if you think about it, solver, the solver and the verifiers are all doing exactly the same work. They're all downloading the, was, the, the code, running it through Wasm VM, calculating their solution and posting it to the contract. So is it actually necessary that we, that we make this into a sequential game where once, once someone submits a solution and other people challenge them? You know, an, alternate, an alternative would be to have a, have a time at which after the task comes in where anyone can submit their solution and the contract itself sees whether there's only one answer, in which case it's deemed correct, or if there's, different, if there's like conflicting answers, these guys could play um, pairwise like verification games with each other in kind of a tournament style where they knock each other out. And that would have different incentives because you don't need the forced error, but then there's other complications. So the incentive stuff is, is kind of an area of ongoing research, if any of you guys are interested in contributing. And the VM and the uh, dispute resolution stuff is more in engineering world right now. And um, yeah, um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, so, so you, yeah, so the question was um, when a challenger and the solver finish playing one of these verification games and the, sol the challenger only proves that the solver was wrong, they don't actually prove that a particular answer was correct, and that's true. So um, there's no, there's no um, notion of like something being absolutely correct. Something's correct if it like goes long enough without being challenged, and the incentives are set up such that someone would challenge it. Um, and um, in the case that a challenger uh, successfully proves a solver incorrect, basically the reward that the task giver had put in 
will go towards uh, reissuing that task, and then it needs to get solved again. Yeah, so um, the, way, the way it works, so in, in a lot of these systems, you need to make a decision between um, along the spectrum of liveness versus safety. And in Truebit's case, we're going like to the extreme of safety, at least in the one that's the Truebit described in the white paper, which is that um, we don't give any guarantees on how long a task is going to get to, to be resolved. Um, but instead we give the guarantee that anyone who wanted to challenge it is like gonna play a, a, a verification game. So a challenger can come in and at the cost of a deposit basically um, delay the resolution of that task. And the way these payments and deposits work is that you know the gas costs and all that time wasted will be paid by, by the ultimate loser of the game. Um, but if you think about it in that Truebit beta protocol where all the challenges come in at once, um, you get much better timeliness guarantees because all the answers come in together, um, all the games happen in parallel to some degree, and then you get a resolution. So that's one of the benefits of that design. Any other questions? Sweet. Uh -huh.